goals and then all of a sudden that can happen tonight, which is just incredible for him as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what, what Steve has got there, and he really understands, is that he's got a brilliant team spirit, and they all they all get on so well, and they all respect him and like him and like what he's trying to do at, uh, at Newcastle. And I thought that the uh, the performance at the weekend against Chelsea, and certainly this evening by the uh, by the result and the way they got it, that epitomises what they've got there. Yeah. Great stuff, Alan. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Al. See you now. Cheers. Uh, so let's get some reaction from inside Stamford Bridge, from inside the Arsenal dressing room, from Hector Bellerin and Granit Xhaka. Granit, congratulations. That is a huge point. It must feel like so much more. Yeah, I think um, we played um, very well um, after the red card. Uh, it's so difficult always uh, with one, one man less, but um, great uh, team spirit. Um, we were speaking in the half-time. We can do it. And uh, we come twice back and, yeah, very proud of the team. And Hector, come back in every sense for you. Come back into the team and then, of course, the result as well. What a wonderful goal. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, everything is, uh, as Granit says, due to the teamwork. You know, it was a really, really, really hard game uh, as it was then uh, with 10 men. Uh, losing on a very important player for us, you know, especially in defence. And uh, we turned it around uh, since, the, since the minute that he got sent off. And uh, at half time, we were only one down. We saw that there was an opportunity to, to get back into the game, and everyone fought, everyone was defending in the box in that second half, especially. And that's, that's what you need, and, and you earn points like this playing like that sometimes. To respond twice with 10 men, that says something. It is, uh, you know, we're a team that uh, we're always looking to improve and uh, we know that one of the things that we do is uh, to be together, to defend together, to, to you know, don't give up until the, until the final whistle and um, today this feels like, as you say, much more than a point. Because Mikel Arteta has been talking about wanting to see more character, more steel in the side, in particular when he has such a disastrous start, not just the penalty, but a red card as well for David. I think after this game, nobody has to speak about us uh, because uh, we show big character today. Mm. Um, a lot of people spoke about us, we are not ready, we have no character in the team, but I think after this game, everyone have to make a big eyes. And Hector, two spectacular goals, yours of course, but Martinelli's goals, 67 yard run, almost from a, well, straight from a corner, 13 seconds. Yeah, uh, counter attacks are one of the things that, uh, you know, they're important in, in the game nowadays and uh, Gabi took it really well, he was uh, very calm in front of the goal, you know, sometimes when you've got so much time to, to think it gets a bit difficult, but he finished it really well and, uh, you know, that's, that's what we practice, that's what we do in training every day and, uh, and it's great to, to come out with one point. You're enjoying life with Mikel Arteta, aren't you? And you were very, very impressive as a centre-half this evening. A new position for you, I think. <laughs> no, I, I, I hope it's not a, a new position. No, um, I think um, he knows I can play there as well and I, I, I try to help the team and yeah, I'm happy with the guys around, make me uh, easier today and very happy. Well, all 10 men could have been man of the match and the two of you, of course, were huge contenders, but Hector just nicks it for that goal, if you could do the honours for me. I didn't know he have a good left back, uh, left uh, fit, but it's bad after the operation. Eh? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. The captain out for six weeks, as I say, his first goal for two years. They're talking about his left foot there. It was an unlikely source, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, but um, what, was, what was encouraging to see was Arsenal's fullbacks were still trying to get forward and still trying to get themselves in a position where they could hurt them. You see them both there. Um, there's Hector, and when, once he cuts in, like, I think Andy's right, poor from Chelsea, but I think the goalkeeper's got to be edging towards the, the right-hand side once he cuts inside, because he's got two players in the way there. It's not going in the near post. Surely he's got to be looking to move his feet, like Al said, a little bit better than he did, but he didn't, and um, I'm, I'm pleased he didn't, to be honest, but it's poor, poor goalkeeper, and I think he's been pretty poor all season. He's somebody that's had to deal with different centre arms in front of him, and maybe that might have a pro um, that might be playing with him a little bit. But I do believe that he's been very poor this season, Kepper. Don't see, I don't see him making enough. The top boys, they seem to get a hand to that, yeah. or they seem to to produce those unbelievable saves and those really real top saves. And I don't know, he just looks a bit vulnerable at the moment. Maybe as right he says, because he's got a very different looking lineup in front of him, pretty much. Well, pretty much every week, you know, whether it's been Tamori one minute, Zuma, and then tonight, Christensen, yeah. Rudiger, it's all chop and change in there. And uh, whether that, whether he's not quite sure of what's in and around him, I don't know. But for sure, you know, I'd like to have thought he'd have, he'd have sorted that out, that one. Again, watch Emerson. Emerson got his, puts his hands behind his back there, which he shouldn't have to. 
So you show him inside, which is the right thing. Now, Jorginho, get right up close. He turns his back. Yeah. Turns his back. The goalkeeper, he, he looks to his... He doesn't want to get beat at the near. I don't see him really leaping to his right and, and looking like getting something on the end of that. I don't. I think it's the sort of one that if you're Frank Lampard and Jody Morris sat on the bench, when that goes in, you think, my goalkeeper, where's my goalie? How come my goalkeeper hasn't been able to get his hand on that? I'll tell you what, it's a really accurate shot. And I'd be also, if I was Frank Lampard tonight, I'd be saying to the boys that went out there to shut Bellerin down, yeah. you need to do more. Yeah. You've got to do better than that. They're down to 10. We've got 11 on the field and we can't stop a right back from flying forward and knocking one in from 20 yards on the edge of the box. So he'd be disappointed at that. But I just think the goalkeeper, not quite... Um, able to get to the sort of levels maybe that some of the other top boys are. Now, Gabriel Martinelli, we talked about before the game, you, you'll be due to text him as soon as uh, we finish <laughs> this show. Ten goals in 11 starts in all competitions for Arsenal. What about his goal tonight? Well, like I said, I, I was saying, um, you know, if, if, as long as Arsenal could stay in the game, we know that Chelsea are pretty, they're lacking in confidence. And once he got into this situation, you think, oh, he's overrun it. And then once he slipped, and we were saying, oh, wow. I didn't fancy him missing. No. You just look at him. He's in total control. He is. As soon as he gets past Kante, there's um, there's 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 a, there's a different. Sh we, we've got another camera angle when we can see him straight on. It might be a better one to see. What well, distance he covers? Absolutely, yeah. But you see, but he gets to a point once he got past him, the compo You can feel the composure. You can feel the way his body. Here it comes. We, we watch it now. Once he goes past him, he relaxes now. Every touch is perfect. Every yeah. single one. And a lovely, totally in control. Lovely slot right here. Brilliant, brilliant. And once good he went finish. through, I was delighted for him. But his right. actual all-round game was good. He was back, chasing back on top of his own full-back when he needed, needed to. He was very, very good in that respect. I thought he's, he worked exceptionally hard. There's an appetite and a hunger about his game. Yeah. He's got something in him that want, I, I want to play for this team. I'm, I'm, I'm itching to get out there and be a regular part of what's going on here under this new manager. And, I, and it's really good to see. I think mm. he looks a real talent. Interesting. Talking of the new manager, let's get the thoughts of Mikel Arteta. Mikel, a big result tonight. Is, is that a turning point in many respects for your team? I don't know. Time will tell. But um, at least I saw a reaction. And um, what I demand always to them is never give up. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter what happens. We have to keep doing what we have to do and play with the spirit that we played every three days. And you've seen that throughout this performance tonight, haven't you? Absolutely. And I'm so proud uh, about the team and how they reacted, how they step up. When a team makes a, a team and makes a mistake, someone gets sent off and they have to protect their back. And that's what they did, all of them. And you scored two fantastic goals. I mean, Martinelli, what a run that was. Yeah. Were you thinking of taking him off a bit earlier? We thought about taking everybody off because obviously the energy goes down, goes going down, and every five minutes somebody was cramping. So we changed our mind a few times, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good point at the end. Obviously, considering the circumstances on the game, it makes this point good. And of course, it was a disastrous start, wasn't it? Not only the penalty, but the red card as well. So to pick yourselves up after that was quite impressive. Yeah, and to this place, the, I said to the team, I want to see how you behave in this stadium. You know, come here against a big team. We are hoping to, to fight to stay in the race for the Champions League until the end. And if you want to do that, you have to come here and you have to win. And, uh, and the way they did it, it was, it was brilliant. And to pick out another couple of individuals, Hector Bellerin, of course, returned from very long injury setbacks to score a fantastic goal. And Granit Xhaka slipping into a centre-half position and, and looked very, very comfortable. When you are willing, when you have the spirit and you have the attitude to do it, you can play anywhere on the pitch. Instead of complaining, they stepped up, they tried to help the team as much as possible. I asked Hector if he was going to be ready for today. And the first answer was, boss, I'm ready. So let's go. These things happen in football. When you want to play, you enjoy your profession after this good moments come. So the trick is now to take this and build on it. Absolutely. And not, not next week, but every three days. That's the demands of this football club. Thanks, Mikko. Thank you very much. All righty. He used those words, attitude and spirit, several yeah. times that they needed it as well after that <coughs> red card in the first half as well, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And I'm really pleased to be able to sit here and listen to people talking about Arsenal with uh, showing attitude and determination and drive and fight and all the things that you, you should have anyway, which he's now instilled back in, in, into the guys. And I think that kind of performance, um, when you can eliminate the, the, the mistakes 
Um, it's, it, you know, and, and you've got that kind of team spirit. We're gonna, Arsenal will sooner or later be, be starting to creep back up where they should be because that tonight was was good. And as much as Chelsea, you have to look at Chelsea and you, they've got their own problems at the moment. It's not nothing to do with Arsenal. Mm. They just took advantage of it. But the fact is, is that they showed a fighting spirit that people have been saying that Arsenal do not have anymore. And I think they're showing that they have now. Did you expect it after the red card? Did you expect that Arsenal reaction? No. I thought after the red card, I thought it would be very, very difficult for them to find a way back. Because not only the red card, the manner of the red card, when it's self-inflicted, it, it hurts so much and... Uh, and, and it's so unnecessary for... A, this is a top player, Mustafi, a World Cup winner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't make that up. You know, it's just so poor. And then David Luiz to compound that error with a, a, a moment of madness, leaving the referee no option, absolutely right, to produce the red. Jorginho rolls it in as we expected him to. From there, Steve, I thought, no, I don't see Arsenal coming back. No, I really don't. And I didn't expect Chelsea to relinquish that and allow them to come back into it either, to be fair. But, uh, but actually, they, they totally deserved it. I couldn't agree more, Righty. I think that they showed great spirit, great heart, great togetherness, good organisation, which you have to have when you're down to 10. You've got to know what you're doing. And, uh, and they deserved it. They really did. And what does it do, that type of um, fight back to, to that group of players that had been suffering under the previous manager? Well, it, it gives you a confidence to know that you're always in a game. And then, like... Like Andy said there, you go down to 10 men and you're, you're organised enough to know that, OK, we're down to 10 men, we're not going to just stay back here and just soak everything up. We're going to still try to get forward, like we saw Hector getting forward and scoring the goal. So they're confident in the fact that they know exactly what they're doing now, which is something that mm. when you watched under Unai Emery, they looked all over the place. And it's a game I do not think we'd have been anywhere near get anything out, get anything out of it. So... There's, there's so many positives to get. All that needs to happen now is, like I say, is eradicate the, 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 the little things. The Lacazette, you know, the silly mistake, like Mustafi, those kind of things. And then all of a sudden, Arsenal will come here and with 10 men, they could have probably, they could win that game. Mm. But it takes time for those things to happen. Delight for Arsenal then, more frustration for Chelsea. Here's their manager, Frank Lampard. Frank, because when you they went down to ten men, I think we all expected you to put your foot in the throat and just kill the game off. But it, it kind of you kind of fell away then. I think in the end of the first half, I think that can happen, and I think we were used to probably having a little bit of an issue where Ozil comes out on the side, and uh, so we we sort of stayed in the mode of dealing with them with eleven. When really with ten, we could have probably been more aggressive. I didn't mind that because at half time we gave us a chance to sort of reboot, recharge, and go again and um, and get it together. And again, you know, even though we're disappointed um, with the result and the errors of the goals, you still look at the chance we create in the second half and actually in some of the first half. Um, and say so we should be scoring more goals. It does finish the game. You let teams stay in the game, it becomes really tough. And both the goals I just didn't like. We, uh, if we're going to get to where we want to be, and we're in a process here, it's, we've got to stop that stuff because we can't get there like that. You want the team to be more ruthless, and you continually say it. Of course, there was another worrying sign with Tammy Abram looked like he'd been helped off the pitch there. That looked like a, a, a problem. Yeah, I don't know what it is yet, um, so we'll, we'll have a look at that. But um, yeah, I want us to get to where we want to be, and that comes with hard work, but you have to translate that onto the pitch. You can't make basic errors when you're one nil up and they've got 10 men and allow them to come running away. And it's not the slip from Mongolo, That's, that can happen. It's the fact that they get away at the edge of our box. That's a moment sleeping, people should know their jobs. Um, and then the last goal, so easy to, to come, that's sort of goal that you see every day over the park a, a right back that just moves it slowly onto his left foot and rolls it in the far corner that can't happen you can hear frank lampard's frustration disappointment he says there andy it's where we're at mm. what's the answer to where chelsea are at what what he's saying is he's saying is we've got potential we've got some good young players but but in having they can be attributes for your team of course they can Fans love a bit of potential and young players that are prepared to step up and be brave. But inevitably, you need experience, you need some warriors, you need some campaigners, you need some people that have got mileage under their belt to really uh, take that potential along with it. And I don't think, I don't think N'Golo Kante has been, been the same N'Golo Kante since they played him in this slightly more forward, more advanced role. He's nicked the odd goal here and there, but I don't see him dominated a game in his own way like he used to for Chelsea when they were winning the league. Um, I don't see him having quite the effect. I think Azpilicueta, again, is a, is a real campaigner and always gives his best, but I think he's not going to get any better now. 
I, and I look, I'm looking around at, at, at after that, and I don't see too many in there that can sort of really drag this Chelsea team along with them when some of these younger players are just probably finding it a little bit tough as they are right now. So I think that's what Frank's saying. We've got some good young players. On our day, we're decent, but we've got a long way to go before we can rub shoulders with anything going on at the top of this table. Okay.